Aloha, this is Devin, and this is going to just be a quick Photoshop tutorial. And it's one that there's probably a hundred different techniques of how to do this, but I'm going to just show you the technique that I use and uh, explain to you why I do it the way I do. So we're going to be talking today about how to cut images away from the background. Um, so, for example, this is a project I had to do a while back and I needed to separate each person onto their own layer and have it be separate from the background. So the first thing you do when you open up your photo is convert it to a layer. Hit OK. And I usually right click on the layer and duplicate it. Call this one uh, Master and we'll turn it off. Well, let's lock it, turn it off we're not going to touch that one for now. We're going to just leave that as a backup in case we need to come back to it. Okay, so for this layer, um, the way I like to cut things out, now there's a few ways to do this. Uh, let me just briefly go over some of the ways. Uh, there's different selection tools over here, such as a quick selection, kind of guesses uh, what to select. There's also the lasso tool, which you can lasso like this. Another common one is by using the pen tool. You can create a mask using a pen, and then you can use that as a selection and then delete the background from the from the from that. Um, but I don't like to use any of these methods. Oh, well, there's one other method I, that you could potentially use and that is by selecting by colors. You can use colors as your selection and you can see here which colors are being selected and you can hold down shift and add more colors. But for this particular example that wouldn't work very well. One other way of doing it would be to use the eraser tool and just start erasing around and you can see that we're starting to get the background in there. And that's pretty cool. So what I like to use is masks and maybe some of you don't know what a mask is or how to add one. So let me just add one real quick to this layer. And you do that by coming down here and clicking on the add a mask button, add layer mask. And you'll see that there's kind of this white image that is linked to this layer. So what this means is that anything that is white on this layer will translate into image that you can see. For example, if I take my brush tool and make sure that we're not editing the image, we're editing the mask, so you can just change that by clicking on these two. I'll take my brush tool and it's, and it's black and I'm working on the mask and when I paint you'll notice that it disappears. Now if I turn off the mask, if I do disable, you'll notice the image is still there. Nothing has happened to this layer only the mask has told Photoshop which pixels to render as visible and which pixels to render as invisible. So that's what a mask does. So the advantage of using a mask is that it makes it easy to go back and make changes to the mask if you ever needed to. If you used um, the eraser tool and you go save your document, open it up tomorrow, you're probably not going to be able to go backwards if you realize that you, um, you know, made a mistake in your masking. You know, sometimes I do that. Maybe I'll erase a leg of a chair I wasn't supposed to or something. And so a mask makes it easy to go back because all you need to do to get the image back is switch your paint color to white and you can paint it back. So this is a great way to um, always have changes which are editable. And that's a key thing in Photoshop. Photoshop is a program which you're experimenting a lot and so it's helpful to have a way to always undo what you have done. Um, one other reason I like to use masks um, is for certain objects you don't want a crisp edge. A lot of people like to use the pen tool because it's easy to move around and edit and that's and that's true. However in some cases I don't like to use the pen tool and here's why. 
if we zoom in close, say on someone's hair, the pen tool is really going to make a really crisp edge around um, this gentleman's head. But that's not what hair is. Hair doesn't have a crisp edge. It has a soft edge. So the advantage of using a mask, and if I grab my brush, I can bring the diameter down. I can use a soft brush. And let me switch the paint color. Here's a quick shortcut key. You can, uh, you can switch the colors between foreground and background by hitting the X key. See that X X X. Okay, so now I'm have now I have the black paint. And I can paint around here and it's a nice soft edge whereas a pen tool would have an edge that looks more like that. And it might be hard to see here but it actually does make a big difference when you come back out. Um, in fact, we could even go softer. Okay, you can kind of see that softness. And that's that's an advantage to using the mask tool. So that is why I use the mask tool, because it's editable and because it allows you to have different um, sharpnesses of edges rather than the pen tool, which only allows you to have one type of edge all around, at least to my knowledge. So for certain times, the, the mask tool will be very beneficial to you. I hope this tutorial has helped. Continue to check back on the website for updates and more tutorials.